pulling my hair out a little bit with this one. Um, I've always said on this channel, I'm gonna show the good, the bad, and uh, the ugly. I've always been a massive fan of marking pipe wherever you can. Because we've got heating pipes going over it, hot and cold pipes over it, and it's just a pain if ever you need to get it. I'm surprised anything ever got into that, because if you look, at the saw pipe, it goes down, then back up. Well, this really ain't gonna plan, did it? As soon as I've touched that pipe, everything's just come apart and uh, just dropped water everywhere. Right, welcome back to the channel. Hope everybody is doing well. First off, I wanna say massive, massive thanks to everyone for their condolences about uh, me losing my my dog last week. It's been a week now and it just feels really weird at home. If you've ever had an animal, a pet, a dog in your house, it's that feeling there's always someone there. Whereas now I walk into my house or even get up in the morning, come downstairs and it just feels a bit empty. Um, but yeah, it's getting better. So yeah, I appreciate everybody's kind words about that. Also on the last video, I asked about the intros. Few people got mixed up between my intro. This is what I class as my intro. The bit before is like a bit of a teaser. Um, and I think a few people get mixed up with, they don't like the teasers because it shows too much of the video. And others were saying, I always skip the chat in the van. But what I've gathered is a majority of people are saying, you've done it from day one. It just gives that little bit of connection to yourself and users, viewers who are watching the channel. I'm gonna keep the teaser at the start because I quite like doing that. And I'm going to keep the intro. And a lot of people have said, I don't watch it. I skip through it, but it's not a problem. So I think a lot of people know that I do it and they skip to where they want. Some people want to watch just the plumbing. Some people want to interact a little bit with me. And some people like the teaser. So we're going to keep it as it is because it's a formula that works. I'll try not to drag it out too much, but today I'm dragging it out a bit. What have we got coming? I did a podcast recording with Trey Legends last week, which was really good for me actually, because it took my mind off everything that was going on at home. Um, and while I was there, fair play to Al at Union, he gave me a load of stuff to give away. So in the next week or so, um, I'll be giving away, there's two or three lights and tape measure and some other bits. So keep your eyes out for that. And I'll let you know when that's coming up. Uh, yeah, today we are finally, finally sorting out the ongoing issue with the sani flow at the bed and breakfast that I look at. As you know, I've been there a few times unblocking it, whereas now it's just given up the ghost completely. So we are just changing the whole unit. So we've had to alter the pipe work to it, hot and cold to it, heating pipes because they were all going here, there and everywhere on top of it. So I'll let the video show you exactly what we got up to before I get a bollock in from people for spoiling what's coming. So yeah, right, I'll leave you to it. Some of you may notice the room that I'm in, um, we are back at the dreaded Sani flow that was featured in two previous videos where I've came out and sorted it out because it's been playing up. As a rule, I'm sure you all know, as a rule, I don't open Sani flows up. This one for this customer is for a bed and breakfast. I'm currently in one of their rooms where this is. And because he has customers in and out all the time, he has to get things sorted straight away. So what we've done previously is fixed the sani flow or unblocked it, because it's always blocked up with bits and bobs. But I said to him, it's just, it's blocking up all the time now and it's beginning to leak and the catches on it are playing up and all that sort of stuff. So what I've said is, I said to him last time, if it plays up again, we're just gonna swap it out for a more serviceable item. And as you can see, all this pipe work around it, I said we've got to sort that out because we've got heating pipes going over it, hot and cold pipes over it, and it's just a pain if ever you need to get it. So what we're gonna do is we've isolated it, got a few spur there in the corner, isolated it there, drain the water down. We've got to drain the heating down as well to obviously alter these pipes. We're gonna get this out, get the new one. I prefer Grunfoss uh, lift pumps. So we've got the Grunfoss, um, I think it's a CWC3, this one. Basically, it's a side entry, so we've got the toilet coming in the side, and we're picking up the wastes for the shower and the basin in the other side. So, we've got that one to go in, but what we've got to do, first of all, is get the pipe work disconnected, get it all drained down, and get this one out. So, let's crack on with it. We've got the hose connected to a rad. Because this is like a little 
oldie worldy cottage. There's only four radiators, I think. One, two, three, four. Yeah, four rods, three rods, and a tower rail. And we're going to strip. We're just going to strip this pipe work back. Get this out. And I've said to Stuart, the customer, we're going to have to run the pipes around the front once the new unit's in position. I think uh, we're going to have to take a bit of this off where the boxing is going into the toilet. But yeah, we've basically got to do what we've got to got to do what you've got to do sometimes. So we'll get all this out. I'm not sure. Hopefully, hopefully we can do something with that as well and get it to fit onto the other one fairly straightforward. But yeah, it's it's just a case of ripping everything back and basically repiping everything and starting again. So let's get some pipe work out now. The heating's drained down and make some room for ourselves. So what's going to be key here is marking these pipes up. Obviously we've got heating pipes here, so, but I'm going to have to mark them right back here so I don't get mixed up. Heating, that's hot. Just so I don't get mixed up if, like that, the pipe fucking moves or something. Cold. I've always been a massive fan of marking pipes wherever you can. Just makes life a whole lot easier. Uh, that's heating as well. That's my lot. Well, I'm surprised anything ever got into that because if you look at the saw pipe, it goes down, then back up to go into the side of that sandy flight. So this is the boxing off the side of the pan. There are heating pipes, I think. There are hot and colds, but it's just a bit of a mess. We're gonna to have to take all of this out. I don't even know how it's connected on the back of the pan. Oh, there's a bank, a bent pan connector, flexi, by the looks of it. Um, yeah, so we're gonna to have to just take all of this out, really. Oh, it's escalating this job. So yeah, we're gonna to have to take that out as well. So you're probably better off taking the pan out it's not even fixed in by the looks of it. I dare say it's on them pans. Oh no, it's got a couple of screws in the back. For what they're worth, I can literally just I can just pull them out with bare hands. Yeah. Right, let's get this out as well then and make life even more easier for ourselves. Well, this really ain't gonna plan, did it? As soon as I've touched that pipe in the back it's like a just everything's just come apart and uh, just dropped water everywhere from inside here so we've got to get this cleaned up at least this is out now and we can reassess what's going on here but let's get this out of the way because it absolutely stinks and get all this pipe work out and uh, yeah let's clean it all up and start afresh so after scratching my head for about 20 minutes looking at how we're going to fit this Grunfosh unit into here. The issues I've got is, so this pipe here, the one flush to this floor, is coming from the basin and the shower. So that's our limiting sort of factor because that has got to go into the bottom of the uh, lift pump. So it's got to sit flush on here. So my initial thought was maybe put the pipe work underneath there, build it up and put the pump on the top, but we can't do that because that's the lowest point and even though we are magicians sometimes we still haven't mastered making water go uphill so i think what i'm going to do is put these pipes i'm going to because i've got a bit of play in that one clip them to the wall maybe alter where it tees in here clip them to the wall clip that to the wall clip the cold to the wall so they're sort of behind the unit and then put the unit Like so, because we can then connect the toilet back onto there. And the good thing with these Grunfoss ones is, if we've got all these pipes clipped behind like so, um, I'll alter it so that all the connections are sort of here. Um, and then these heating pipes can sit around the front. I can bring that down and just connect on whichever one it is. So it's just a pipe on the bottom. But the good thing with these Grunfoss ones is, everything is here. So if it ever comes to a point where you've got to take that out, the mechanism and the macerator bit is accessible in there. That there 
keep all the pipe work behind it because as you know before it was coming all over the top and uh, I think that's going to be the best sort of way we can do it without too much of a disturbance because we've obviously got to refit all the toilet and get the pipe work sorted in there as well so I think that is the best way I'm going to do it and then of course we've got to reconnect the outlet onto there and it's going to come across that so I'm just going to have to check what I'm going to what I might do is uh, bring it back round but that's least of our worries at least we know how in principle we're going to fit it in so what you need to remember to do on these Grunfoss pumps this is the lowest inlet now let me just take this out I've already drilled it out but I can get it out they come with that sealed up just in case you want to use that one or the one the other side and what you have to do is drill your own hole in it so it's just a case of popping that rubber bung off drilling that insides out and then that goes back down because that sits internally so when the water's going in it obviously opens up and then when it's full the pressure the water will push against there and stop it from uh, running back on itself so we've got that done so we'll pop that in and lock it into position and then that bung goes over the front of it and then your inch and a half pipe sits in there so it will sit that way so that will go on jubilee clip on the good thing with these is it comes with loads of jubilee clips so we jubilee clip that on there inch and a half from there into that t at the bottom i'm just going to make this up for now and then i'm going to get all these pipes clipped to the back wall but yeah inch and a half pipe in the bottom and then we're going to come out of here with some four inch and then a pan connector a rigid pan connector on the back of there into the back of the pan so let's get these pot let's get finish getting this made up with that and then we can get some clips get these clips back to the wall so i think i'm going to alter that so it's just a little bit aesthetically better um and then um and then we can get it clipped to the wall and begin refitting it hopefully right uh, i've been pulling my hair out a little bit with this one um i've always said on this channel i'm going to show the good the bad and uh, the ugly. Now, as you'll remember, before with this, the pipe work come all over the top of it and it was just an absolute nightmare. So this is the best way I've found to do this one without causing too much aggro with every bit of pipe work that we've got. So this is the way I've had to do it. I've altered the pipes around the back and clipped them to this back wall. We've bought this heating pipe along the front um, just because on these Grunfoss units, as I've said, that comes off and it's just a lot easier to work with. But that is it in position. We've got to connect it up through the other side. We've got to take the waste through, yeah, for the um, for the toilet and for the, the waste from the basin and the shower. But, but yeah, that is basically in the position where it's going to go. So we can lift it in and out still. I'm just going to get the waste connected and poke through the wall so we've done this side and then we can concentrate in there getting that but as I said you know people are going to go oh I'd have done it this way I'd have done it that way that is the best way I've found to do it without too much grief going on and you know at the end of the day it's a bed and breakfast they need this back by four or five o'clock today so I'm sort of up against it as well let's crack on with it and uh, try and get the, the waste on that connected to it now the outlet is in or I've just got to solder it up, but I've just sort of test fitted it at the minute just to see if this cover will come off, which it will. And obviously you can't put knuckle bends on the outlet of a macerator for obvious reasons. It will just block up really easily. So we put a little slight kick on it there just to send it in front of the macerator unit there and then a sweat bend. But yeah, I'm going to solder that up, get that in. Then that from this side is done. Then we can concentrate on that. I've got to swing off and get a, a bent pan connector for that pan but yeah i'm just happy that this is sort of as good as in now so we've just got to connect that up get the electrics connected to it and then finish off that side there we go it's up and running now i've got the water back onto it connected the waste it's a hell of a lot quieter but yeah i'm just glad this is going to be boxed in but it's a lot more serviceable than what the other one was thank god but yeah this has just been one of them nightmare jobs to be honest i've had to have all of that out all of that out altering pipes that 
<laughs> were just an absolute nightmare to do. We couldn't get the floor, we couldn't get any of that exposed. This is one I'm glad to be seeing the back half ticked off, but at least there's a new unit in. So, in principle, if ever there's an issue with it again, we can just take this cover off and that is completely serviceable all inside there. We managed to get this boxing back on, which is great because I didn't want to sort of leave Stuart without anything covering that up because I know he's got customers coming in here later on. Get these shit jobs where you've just got to knuckle down, crack on with it, and I always, in my head, I always think of, remember that job that went absolutely perfectly and you earned good money on it and everything went right? Just got to think about them ones when you get little shit jobs like this, so. Hope you've enjoyed this one, a bit different. As I said, I wanted to show everything on it. Drop me a comment, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and I'll catch you on the next one.